Let's go back to Bailey Zappi, though, because obviously he's a headliner. Um, you had some reporting around what happened with him. I'll just share what I heard from someone uh, within the team, which was two words. Quote, he stunk. And that covered training camp. It covered the preseason. We can go into the numbers in a second. But the things that you heard were pretty similar. Yeah, and that's just that the performance wasn't good enough, that he wasn't picking up the offense uh, you know, fast enough, so that he wasn't a good enough fit for what Bill O'Brien wanted to do. And it's essentially just what I heard from multiple people was that it wasn't good enough. And, you know, what I have expected, like if I had heard, you know, a week ago, yeah, we just don't think that Bailey's good enough. Would I have expected them to cut him? Probably still not just because there, there was no safety net there in case something happens to Mac Jones. But I think to some degree, you have to give Bill Belichick credit for just saying like, all right. I mean, you haven't been good enough. You haven't, you don't deserve to make this 53 man roster. You might be a quarterback. We might need you, but we want to set a precedent here for players who are good enough to make the team. And you're not one of them. I do want to go on a slightly mini rant about this though, because I feel like I've seen too many people say like, Oh yeah. Like, Bill Belichick took a risk and it really paid off. He, he waved his two quarterbacks and still wound up getting them on the practice squad. And like, yeah, that's great. But the Patriots also drafted a quarterback a year ago in the fourth round that they did not care about losing, that they let all other 31 teams get a crack at. And they did not care if any of those other teams claimed him. And like, maybe they were hoping that none of the teams claimed him. But that's not really how waving a player works. Like you have to accept that someone else could take this player. So I, I don't I don't really look at it. Like, I don't think that this is a way to praise Bill Belichick. I think Mike Florio was the latest one to do it. He wrote a piece of it like, oh, Bill Belichick still playing chess and everyone else is playing checkers. Like, that's not what this is. They yeah, cut the, the a player that it wasn't was, good enough. Was poker and everyone else is playing 52 pickup. And that it was maybe five paragraphs. And I don't mean to spend part of the podcast dumping on Mike Florio. Anyone could do that in their right. own time. But it just felt like an article for the sake of the headline. Like, okay, right. you had one line, yeah. but what was the substance behind it? And you're absolutely right. In an ideal world, the Patriots don't cut Bailey Zappi because he's right. good enough, not only in our eyes on the outside, but their eyes on the inside. Because five weeks ago, Bill Belichick is saying, we're going to let them compete, meaning Mac and Zappi and McSorley, though we all know what that really meant, and see how it goes. And how it went is Zappi's technically not on the team. Right. Yeah. And like no one's no one's praising the Panthers right now for cutting Matt Corral after a season. <laughs> they like if they wind up, you know, adding him to their practice squad, no one's gonna be like, oh, great job, Panthers. You drafted quarterback in the third round and wound up having him on your practice squad a year later. And I guess like, you know, I, I don't want to necessarily dump on Bill Belichick too much either, because I do think he deserves some praise for cutting his losses and and kind of making this statement by cutting Bailey Zappi. I don't think it's the end of the world that they had to trade away Pierre Strong and cut Bailey Zappi. But at the same time, fourth round pick should be on your team for more than a year. And as you just mentioned, Bailey Zappi technically not on the team right now. And if he goes on to have success or winds up being a star, whatever it is with the Patriots in the future, the reality is, is that they still did cut him. And the, yeah, they wound up, it wound up working out. They wound up on the practice squad, but like they still made the decision to give him away to any one of the other 31 teams. New FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube at YouTube TV. So let's back up a second, because I think in the way that, you know, we are highlighting what the Patriots did was in no way a vote of confidence, but in fact, the exact opposite. And there's reporting out there that the Patriots still wanted him back as your backup quarterback. If you wanted him as your backup quarterback, you keep him on the team. It's as simple as that. I believe other reporting that they wanted a veteran as a backup, ideally a Colt McCoy who's got an elbow injury uh, or somebody else obviously couldn't find that veteran because Bailey Zappi's back. But People listening to this, probably Bailey Zappi fans would go, where the hell were you guys at every single practice right. not documenting that Bailey Zappi could have been cut? And I'll tell you this. I also, like Doug, would not have expected Bailey Zappi to be cut, even if I had heard the same thing I heard, which was he stunk in that covered preseason and training camp. But here are the numbers. Preseason. He was 30 of 51. That's sub 60% completion percentage for 253 yards, one touchdown, five sacks. 
You, of course, will remember the three fumbles in one game in the preseason finale. Training camp, he completed 64% of his passes. He had six interceptions in team periods that led all quarterbacks. And that's with maybe one or two reps with the starters, and that was it. So he had the highest interception percentage. He took the most sacks in the preseason and in training camp. And is a guy who routinely struggled with batted passes at the line because he's six foot. That's how God made him. I'm not going to knock him. That's a reality if you're going to make someone your backup quarterback. So I wrote in the last couple of days of camp, he was in my duds category. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you and I talked about this being like, right. is Billy is Billy really going to be a dud for a second straight day? It was like, yeah, that's just what it is. Yeah. But we didn't go to the lengths that the Patriots did, obviously cutting him. The gamble paid off. I'll just ask you this, not playing the result knowing that he cleared waivers with Malik Cunningham, by the way, who we can talk about, mm-hmm. would you have made that gamble based on his performance in camp in the available market on the outside with the veterans who were hanging out somewhere? Probably not. Even though I like Bill Belichick, like I said, making this statement by saying your camp stunk and you're cut. Uh, but I still think that he showed enough last year in those two games, not to compete with Mac Jones, because that was never the reality of the summer, but like, maybe there's something there to work with. But I mean, the simple fact does remain that they switched offenses and that seems to possibly be a part of this too. And, you know, something that I've heard is that he just didn't seem to be fitting into what the Patriots were asking him to do this summer. And it is interesting because like, like you mentioned, sometimes, you know, we get so deep into the weeds of things. You'd be like, oh, who is a dud today? And I feel like every time you ask me that question, because it wasn't very often, I was like, I kind of think Bailey Zappi was a dud today. <laughs> yeah. But I still I still don't know if it reached the level of of cutting him. Like, I know, like, the stats are – the stats aren't horrible. That's the thing is that they're, they're middling. They're not terrible. And well, they're like a backup quarterback, you know, like this right. is the bar of what Mac Jones needs to meet, now. or anyone who's going to play, but at least just be human duct tape for the offense. If right. the starter misses a couple games, which obviously Mac did last year and Bailey was better than duct tape. He was gorilla glue. I don't know, pick your adhesive, but he was really good in those couple of games, which I want to get back to, but keep going. Yeah. And I mean, I'll, I'll go into that as well, because I think it's pretty obvious that the Patriots kind of tailored their offense to what Bailey Zappi could do last year. They kind of schemed it up so that he he could play the best that he possibly could. Which, and then this year, it felt like they kind of threw the whole offense at him and said, all right, let's see how you do sinking or swimming when we give you everything. Everything that, that Bill O'Brien can put out there for you. And didn't go as well. But I don't know, like, if it is Colt McCoy how much better is it going to look if he's getting thrown everything that Bill O'Brien can throw at them and if you think that this guy has some sort of developmental traits wouldn't it be worth another year of saying like all right if you have to go in there we'll tailor the offense to you and you know scheme things up a little bit more for you I I don't know I think that this does show you that they didn't think that there was anything developmental about Billy Zappi he is what he was last year he is what he is, that he's not going to significantly or dramatically improve, and that, you know, who he is as a quarterback just isn't good enough to ever compete for a starting role, and quite frankly, wasn't even good enough to guarantee his his role as the backup. 